this week there's a new virus that I'd never even heard about, the RSV. And then I found out that uh, I'm officially old because that's the virus for old people. <laughs> so that made me feel real good too. Spent a, spent a month out with my snotty-nosed grandkids and come back with a, with a virus that told me for a loop this week. But uh, I'm feeling okay. I'm just dizzy, as, or not dizzy, I'm just weak at this point. I was dizzy. That's why David kind of walked behind me. I asked him, I told him a while ago I, I could fall down real easy. But uh, it's not about me this morning. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad that you're here. And I had a couple of announcements, I think, to make. What were they, Kelly? Ornaments. That's what it was. So WMA leads in the ornament. To, to, you saw the two trees out in the foyer. And for $5, you can have your name or the name of a loved one put on that ornament. And it's just a fundraiser for the WMA, and it's uh, in memory or in honor of someone that uh, in your family that you'd like to uh uh, memorialized to be in memory of so you can see Kelly about that and then we do want you to come next Saturday we'll try to not have a house full of virus by then uh, but uh, uh, come and enjoy a time with us next Saturday as we uh, as Kelly just cooks all week I, I'm sure and we have a time to uh, enjoy Christmas uh, together it is looking a lot like Christmas around here, isn't it? Uh, Deanne and Tammy has done a great job just uh, uh, decorating, and when you get over to the BBC, you'll you'll see that as well. That uh, I think she's about spent the night. Where is she? She not in here? It, she's over to BBC. Was you with her last night, Tammy? Okay. She she was here pretty late, so you be sure and thank uh, uh, Deanne for all the uh, time she spent decorating. I know it'll be beautiful. Thank you for uh, bringing food because we'll just enjoy uh, food this morning. Uh, the message this morning is going to be from one of our core values. Remember our core values? And fellowship is one of them. What we do as a church is important. We go back to Jesus' time 2,000 years ago, and they met from house to house. They broke bread together. They fellowship together. It is an important uh, word. Do you remember what our mission statement is? Can somebody tell me our mission statement this morning? Who wants to lead out in that? We exist. We exist. Okay, and here it is on the screen. We exist to glorify God by helping people find and follow Jesus as we worship, grow, and serve. And those three words, worship, grow, and serve, each have two different uh, words tied to them that are our six core values, and, and worship and prayer is two core values. That's what we believe is important. And under the word grow, we believe Bible study and fellowship are two words that's very important, core values, and serve is service and outreach. We believe those two are very important. We're going to go back to Romans this morning, but from a topical standpoint, I'm going to just read through the uh, first part of Romans 16, and there'll be a lot more to say about this as we get to Romans 16, but this morning I'm just picking out this passage because of all the names these names meant something to the Apostle Paul. As he had been all over the Roman Empire, he had met these people from all over. And all roads led to Rome, remember? And so many of the early Christians did end up in the church at Rome. There's many of these names. And so Paul is sending greetings. So the title this morning, back up one slide, is uh, uh, our fellowship. It's all about one another, and it's about greeting the saints. In fact, my Bible uh, titled it, uh, Romans 16, is Greeting the Saints. And you are the saints, remember? Now, the Catholic Church has made saints out of different people, but uh, saints as used in the Bible is you and I. It's, it's Christians. We are the saints. And Paul is sending greetings 
to the saints in, uh, in Rome. So look with me at Romans chapter 16, verse 1. Verse 1 says, I commend to you, Phoebe. It's the only word, only time commend he's going to use. Most Bible scholars believe Phoebe probably carried this letter from Paul to the Roman church because Paul didn't make it to Rome till later. But uh, I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Centria. And then he's going to list about, go ahead, he's going to list uh, I greet you about 30 times. And so look at this. I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister who is a servant of the church at Centria, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of, for indeed she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Epaphras, and who is first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Junica, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners, and who are of note among the apostles who are, who, also were in Christ before me. Greet Amphilus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our, our fellow worker in Christ, and Statius, my beloved. Greet Apollos, approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my countrymen. Greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, who have labored in the Lord. Greet the beloved Perseus, who labored much in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Greet Asnistrus, Pelagian, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. Greet Philogathus and Julia, Nurses, and his sister Olympias, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ greet you. And so there's a lot could be said about all these names, but uh, this morning the overview is all I want to give you. I want you to realize that as Paul was going through all of his missionary journeys, he met all these people. All these people meant something to him. Faces, I think, would have jumped up to him, and he would have been in, uh, he would have been reminded of all these people and, and what they did. So I wanted to take this morning, since this is Fellowship Sunday, and I wrote something out for you. I just want you to think about this morning as who is important, and everybody's important, but who who is serving in this church, and who I would send greetings to, and who I would thank. And so from a spirit of thanksgiving, I've written this out this morning. First, let me thank you for all who are faithful to give. You're a generous church as proven by your giving over $100,000 last year. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you to our deacons. They're a laid back bunch, but anytime they're needed, they respond. Bill and Doug are also our treasurers, and neither one of them are in here at the moment. Bill and Billy Paul take care of the maintenance of the building, along with Mitch and Jeff and Janie, handle all the yard mowing. Doug oversees the youth, the children's ministry, giving of his time to go to camp and soar every year. David co-teaches an adult Sunday school class and co-leads our Sunday morning worship as well as being a valuable advisor to the pastor. And, of course, Billy Paul is famous for blowing off all the acorns and leaves. You know, we can't leave that out for Billy Paul. Thank you to our deacon's wives. When we were getting ready to start First Kids, I asked Pat if she would lead in the kitchen and serve a meal each Sunday night, and she jumped at the chance and said, I'll get Fran to help, and she did. 
and then they drafted their husbands. And don't you dare get in the way of Billy Paul when he's doing dishes. He'll fight you over his dishwater. I wish he was in here because he would be agreeing. I don't know why you have to wash your dishes before you put them in the dishwater. But that's the way Billy Paul is. He wants to rinse his dishes and then put them in the dishwater so they can be washed. Oh. <laughs> well, when I do wash dishes, I just end up with a bunch of stuff in my dishwater. <laughs> Pat and Fran also lead in our hospitality ministry, meals for funerals, meals for church, meals for sick, as demonstrated by this past Friday. Thank you, Fran. And, and thank you, church. I was not able to be here. I I'm sorry that I wasn't, but I wasn't holding my head up very good. But I knew it was in good hands, too. And I have not even heard. I hadn't seen anybody until this morning that I know it went well. I know Danny preached a good message. I know you fed the family. And, and thank you for doing that. And that's why I'm thanking you this morning. That's what fellowship means. And Pat also leads with Kelly in the WMA ministry. Pat also leads with Terry in the Goldie Oldie ministry. Tammy's faithful to serve in the youth and children ministry in any way she can. She is one soul that's always ready to serve. If you don't know that, Tammy just steps up. She's not on run forward. She's not on run toward the microphone. But when she's needed, she'll do anything she can. Becky is our secret Sunday school secretary and church clerk. So did you hear all the things that your deacons and your deacons' wives are involved with? I wouldn't be opposed for a hand of appreciation to your deacons and your deacons' wives this morning. Mary Ann is our assistant Sunday school secretary and church clerk uh, serving along with Becky. Thank you to all who teach the Word of God. David's already been mentioned, but thank you to Terry and Nancy and Rodney and Sharon. and Thank you to Kelly and Selena, Phyllis and Kim and Gina for teaching the kids and the youth. Thank you to Betty and Nancy as they lead on the Tuesday morning Bible study. Thank you to all those who serve in First Kids. Kelly and Emily lead in memory and music. Doug leads in games. Gina, Nancy, and I lead in Bible study. Then there are all the crew leaders. I hope I don't miss any, but Michelle leads in the kindergarten age. And then Connie and Gail and Jessica and Kim and Terry Price, Presley, and Mitzi, and Cynthia, and Jimmy leading the older kids. And Pre-K is led by Deanne and Tammy, and Deanne's also our bus driver who needs some help. So Deanne's eyesight is giving her some trouble, and she says, I'll go pick them up, but I really could use some help if you'll get me some help to help take them home. So we'd uh, if you just volunteer for one night a month, uh, we'd get the kids taken home. Sometimes I can talk things to death. I know that y'all don't know that that's a surprise to all of you. And we can talk about getting started with some things, and then we don't do it. Deanne just walked in one day and said, Brother Ken, where are the keys to the van? I've got 15 kids I need to go pick up. And that's how you start a ministry. <laughs> You just get the keys to the van and you go pick up 15 people. And that's what she's doing every Sunday evening. And thank you to Dana who holds it all together and for publishing the bulletin every week. 
And it seems like every day, don't it, Dana, when I was doing the bullet, it just seemed like, how can I, how can this roll around every day that you, but uh, the weekly bulletin uh, takes time and effort too. And thank you to Tammy and Deanne for all the church decorations that they do. Thank you to Fran and Alyssa who play the piano and the organ. Thank you to Kelly and David, Gina, Sharon, and Emily who lead our worship music. Thank you to Betty, who's our church secretary, part of the card ministry, along with Nancy and Betty Pace, the other Betty, and Margie. Thank you to Betty and Margie, who keeps our flowers looking so beautiful. Thank you to Lindsay, who does our books. Jimmy, for being the custodian. Billy Paul and Barry, for security. Jeff for monitoring the security cameras. Mitch for the being our sound man. Thank you to the Benevolence Committee. Mike and Terry and Fran. As many of you who jump in and help with food like you did Friday, like you do today, help with funerals and meals and serving the sick and visiting the sick. As far as the card ministry, uh, I probably hear more than anybody else, but I hear from people. Thank you for the cards that you sent. I didn't even know who the cards were sent to because you guys handle it. The card ministry handles that, and it is valuable, and people do thank me. And sometimes cards are sent back thanking the church, and I try to post those or read those. Thank you to those who are so faithful to attend Sunday school, so faithful to attend worship. And about every one of your names were mentioned at some point in time down through here. And what occurred to me as I was writing this and I was looking back over it is how your giftedness fits what you're doing. How the people's names that I just read, how you seem to just fit what you do. And I think that's God's leading in the life of a church, how that uh, uh, Tammy and Betty Birchfield don't want a microphone in front of their face, <laughs> but behind the scenes, they'll get stuff done, <laughs> and so we work in our giftedness, and God blesses all of us because of it, so just as Paul was able to thank so many people and greet people and and uh, present them to the church at Rome for being valuable assets into his life. I thank you this morning, church, because we are part of something bigger than just a few people at First Baptist Church Mag, uh, McNeil. We are the church of Jesus Christ. We are a body of believers joined together by our mutual love of the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We go back to that. That's what we are. That's who we are. That's our marching orders to carry forth the name of Jesus to a, to a dying, lost and dying world. And so this morning, you know, it's the time for sniffles and sneezes and coughing and all that, but it's also a time of great rejoicing. A uh, time of rejoicing in who Jesus is, that he loves us enough that he uh, was born in, into humanity, that he took the robe of humanity upon him, that he became a human, that he uh, lived a life, of, uh, a perfect life, but a life that was hard. And he died on a cross, and three days later, though, he came alive. And that's the story that we have to tell. And just as the story in the book of Mark, as we've been looking at in Sunday school, people either receive it or they mock at it. And our goal is just to present the message, the message of Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit's role, it's the Holy Spirit's job to send that message home uh, to the heart. But our role is to just love Jesus to love one another, 
uh, and present the message to all all those that'll that'll listen. And so I know Barry doesn't believe in a, I can preach a short message, but Barry, that's it this morning. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> So I hope it's a message to encourage us that we that we can realize that just spending time together, just fellowshipping together, uh, is part of our worship uh, because we need either one need one another. And did you notice that there was one another in this passage? Greet one another with a holy kiss. So Barry, pucker up, get ready. <laughs> I don't know how far we want to take that in our sniffles and sneezes uh, today, but uh, do greet one another heartily. Enjoy a meal together, and if you don't mind, I'll dismiss us and ask the blessing on the food, and we'll just go enjoy a meal together. How about that? Let's bow together.